I'm recording right now, so hopefully all this video and the voice should all come up on the final video. So we're going to talk about uh, animated effects. The um, things that I discovered uh, working on the whale scene, actually, when I was... Uh, and also, also, actually, no, not Can the whale scene. Can you show it um, in Little Quick and Quill Theater? If you're... Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Actually, so people uh, know what you're talking about. Yeah, it's more the 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 father uh, fishing with my dad uh, scene. Uh, I think that's the one that I started to to come up with these uh, tricks. So uh, this. If you want to mute the sound in the UI, oh, Daniel. Yeah. Is yeah, that good? Thanks. Yeah. yeah. So when I come up with an idea of making this wake of um the the, the the water can you hear me yep oh, okay the the water wake so um, and that's kind of the beginning of something that spiraled into oh i have an idea oh maybe i can do this oh yeah <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> so uh, the the way i did this and i'm going to show you right now is using goro's trick of making Essentially, this like a, a, a infinite loops, infinite transform movement in one direction, right? So the the the, the little waves here, I I did one set of them and then I moved them and and the, using Goro's trick, it looks like it's infinitely moving moving in that direction, right? So let's go back to Quill and let's see how we do this. So that. Uh, once I got the hang of it, I started to really practice and figure out, oh, we can do a lot of effects uh, based on this. Uh, and I really wanted to share with you guys. So. so let's see how something like the wake was done. Uh, actually, I did something like that, something like this, like a, like a shape. And it's very important it has like waves. So like a wavy shape, right? And also it's very important that we can <coughs> we can make it connect at some point, right? Anyway, I'm just gonna do re this really rough. It doesn't have to be really good. I want you guys to understand the concept. Um, and you will see later at the end of the class that you can apply this to other effects and other things. Um, let me do, okay, no. We have this thing. Um, oops. Let's get this and let's get the, the color ready as well. Okay, so I wanna I want to make sure that um, the bottom part and the top part are going to be able to connect somehow. So I'm, I'm using the grid really here to to my advantage, you know, because I I know I want to connect the bottom and the top. I want I want them to somehow be connected, right? And it's very important it has that kind of wavy shape. So let's uh because i'm in the grid uh every time i do the gimbal it's gonna be always perpendicular and it's gonna always have this kind of perfect uh connection right um it's all flat and connected all right so we have this and actually uh no i forgot to do something before duplicating uh, we have to draw some guides and these guides are going to be useful to match with the grid right and to draw the guides i'm just going to use a straight line and the reason to use this is because it, it won't go on the other on the, on, the, on the other axis it's going to really let, stick to the to the grid yeah so let's get that these guides this is this is just following Goro's trick, huh? 
<laughs> so I yeah, I wouldn't make the guides actually like super long, so you can select them later. But it's it's fine for yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. um, just just as a tip, I would just generally make them long. That's a, yeah, that's absolutely right. So anyway, let's carefully connect those guides in there. Another duplicate, and make sure it connects really well here. When you do this, Daniel, like I tend to just use redo because then it's like a perfect duplicate, you know, oh, like, yeah. um, That's so nice. when you do the first, um, first duplication, I just keep redoing because then you don't have an offset at all, you know, oh, yeah, like yeah. it's yeah. actually That's perfect. Yeah, you're, you're right. Okay. Let's do, let's, let's do what God said. Let's do a redo here. So, so while Daniel's, uh, uh, fixing that, uh, just a quick question. So, uh, Goro, you have this style of doing the infinite loop. And then if you look at uh, Nick's um, instructions or his tutorials on Adam Brush Academy, he uses an erase tool to sort of close in the infinite loop. Do you guys see a difference or a preference on one way versus the other? Absolutely. So um, that's like a, um, also a trick that I used to use back in the days. And I think Nick used to do it that way too. I think he changed his workflow too. Um, just remember that anything that is um, erased uh, is still there. So it's actually not very performant because you're, you're blowing up the poly count. Um, well, so basically, I... if you erase strokes only if the strokes are 100% gone, like 100% transparent and you covered the entire stroke, it actually disappears. But um, otherwise, it's just an opacity. Um, change so basically what i would recommend to do is just what daniel did like without erasing and instead of um letting it uh erase you just paint it colorize it with a background color to make it look transparent for example or mask it with like a large stroke okay Perfect. Thank you. Yeah, I may yeah. use erase in this live stream though. <laughs> Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no, Gore is right. It's better to use the the colorize with the background color. But the yeah, there's many ways. To yeah, use because them. then then there's no transparency computation and stuff. You don't get the dithering, and it's also like poly budget wise, it's better. Yes, that's true. Uh, I am not the best at doing that. I'm a very. You're uh, pretty good. <laughs> I, I tend to use the the, tra the, the transparency, uh, but yeah, um, it's a it's good. It's a good. It's a good thing to keep in mind. Like, uh, it's better to colorize uh, in terms of uh, performance, and also to avoid the differing uh, effects, right? But anyway, let's let's get them moving. And. Like you know, the Goro trick means basically that we have to move this with a transform key, right? So I, I added a transform key in the first frame and random frame. It doesn't matter which one. Just going to put another one and then we'll decide later the, the speed. But first of all, before the speed, we're just going to move. And I'm going to move it exactly one quadrant or one grid uh, square, right? Just make sure that exactly the amount of movement is one grid square, which is actually the size of the sprite. I'm, call I'm calling these pieces sprites, right? These duplicates. I actually don't think you set a key. Oh, you're absolutely right. Sorry. This dude, this morning is being bad. <laughs> I do that so often. You're fine. There's so many things that are going wrong. Okay. Let's do this again. So now we have. Uh, wait, yeah. I want I want to begin from the first keyframe, second free keyframe, and then move it exactly one grid. Uh, it's gotta be precise. I mean, don't go crazy with the precision. If it's not 100%, it's okay. I think it, the effect is gonna still work. And then to complete the effect, we need to loop this forever, right? So the way to do that, as you know, is put this into the sequence layer, get it inside of the sequence layer. And then we have the playhead on that end of the, the loop. So we select the sequence layer and then we click on loop and hopefully it's going to loop this thing forever. And the effect is going to be like, a, Instead of moving backwards, which is actually what it does, 
it's actually going back, but it's not the the visual effect is that it keeps going forward. So having that super clear, let's see what else we can do with this, right? First of all, we can obviously we can change the speed by just changing this and then going back here and loop it again so we have a faster cycle let's say and this is how i did the the wake um and how do you avoid this popping so once you have this working and you have the, the right amount of speed you can bake it right and then when you bake it you you make it into frame by frame animation which is I'm going to tell you why it's so important to do that, right? But before baking, it's very important to go here and remove the little guides that are going to be annoying later because they're going to be duplicated. So I remove the guides, go here, hit on bake, and boom, we bake it. That's awesome. We have this amazing group of geometry frames making this perfect movement up. And it's repeating infinitely and the only problem right now is that we have this pop so to remove the pop uh, like we were saying before there's two ways you can either erase so we can do this just holding the trigger as much as possible and the same for the bottom part right there just make sure that we don't see that pop And, of, and if you if we wanted this to be bigger, um, the solution would have been to just make a bigger uh, before doing the transform, just make it longer. So so we have more because to del to remove the pop, you have to sacrifice one quadrant of uh, of the the pattern that you establish, right? If you quickly can cover, like, if you can hide this um, frame by frame and bring back the keyframe one again, um, I just want to, like, recommend. So basically, because you baked it, you have a lot of geometry, right? Yeah. Another way to do it is you just use the cube brush and um, and mask the opposite ends uh, with the background color. So you can make it so it just covers, so like a large cube brush, right? Um, yeah, and then in the in the in the, the my dad scenes, uh, uh, yeah. what, what I did is mask it. So instead of uh, erasing, I masked it. Um, yeah, just to cover the advantage of doing that is like because um, keyframed animation is um, interpolated at the headset's frame rate, so it's gonna look super smooth. But um, when you bake it, then it goes to the um, global frame rate, which is gonna be in this case twenty four frames per second. So it might look a little bit jittery, right? Yeah, but you yeah, yeah. You, you get that, uh, and it's a disadvantage, but you get advantages, which I'm going to talk about later, right? Uh, cool. Yeah. I mean, um, yeah, we can act, we can totally do this mask. Uh, I wish there was a way to <laughs> to really recover that color of the background. Uh, <laughs> so we can we can just. Uh, just you know, this is the background, <laughs> and that's it. Uh, yeah, so that's a mask now, and just uh, what I did in my scene is just use the erase tool a little bit here, a little gradient, and now we have this really smooth. Like Gordo said, uh, the advantage of doing this without baking is you get this really smooth motion. And thanks to the mask, it kind of disappears, and it works well for a, for for that for like a wake of of a boat, you know. But the problem is, okay, it's really smooth, it's really nice, but it's just very similar. All these are the same. You could really see it's the same as a straight line, and it's kind of boring, right? So how can we make that a little bit more fancy? So using the bake version of it, thanks to having this baked, we can do more effects and more things to it. So how do we do it? So just use the selection tool and just cover everything, right? And and hit play. And 
what Quill does, which is wonderful, is selecting every single frame into one multi-selection, right? So at the moment, the computer is starting to chug a little bit. <laughs> it's going crazy because I have all this geometry selected. But that we can use that to our advantage. Because if you use a graph tool, we could do some cool little changes to our animation. So it doesn't always look the same. It looks a little bit more interesting, and more similar to real life if we were if we we're doing this kind of wake effect, right? And also the thickness is a cool thing to try. Maybe maybe they get smaller at the end and thicker in the beginning, right? And the wonderful thing is it keeps the animation nice. as it is. And doesn't that isn't that amazing? I mean, t I, when I f when <laughs> the, when I discovered this, I was like, dude, you can just do so many things with this trick. Like, doesn't it look like a smoke effect as well? Really, really kinda, cool. There, kind of looks like a smoke effect, right? So, this mm. is this is flat, and now we we're using it as a as a wake of a boat, right? Imagine this is a boat. But what about we want to do a smoke or a fire? Okay, let's do. Let's delete all the stuff and let's make And this is something you definitely can't do with the technique I was talking about with the, um, just transform keyframes because you're basically changing the one frame, like one layer, one frame yes. layer. So it's any change is going to show. Yes. Exactly. It depends on what you so want to do. Transform. Yeah, exactly. Transform keys, you get you the advantage of super smooth frame rate. And that's wonderful too. I mean, but it gives you the disadvantage that only uses one set of geometry and then moves it in, in uh, across the time, right? Uh, baking it gives you the advantage of you can manipulate all those frames with a, with a grab tool and do these crazy cool effects, you know? So let's do a fire and see what's going on. I'm going to improvise a little bit, okay, guys? And I'm, uh, again, using the grid as a base to you know to help me guide everything so to do the fire let's start with a, just a simple cylinder Oop. Uh, okay let's do the simple cylinder right there uh, something like that <laughs> you may hear baby saying yellow that's completely normal <laughs> So, again, the waves, right? The waves are very important to get this kind of wavy effect, which is it happens in, 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 in natural, in real life, when you see a smoke or a fire. Uh, they tend to have this kind of wavy effect. And when you see a 2D animated uh, fire in a 2D animation, the, the, the wave are very important, not to get this feeling of a wave coming up. Uh, let's make it a little bit more interesting. Just gonna want, uh, I think that's okay for now. Um, I think, okay, we can uh, make this a little bit more fiery. Just go, looks more like a fire. And also, I'm trying to be aware of the three dimensions as well. We don't want this to be a flat effect either. Well, something like that. That's okay. You're basically doing the Quill Weekly Challenge on water, fire. Oh, yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, okay, let's also not forget about the little guides, uh, which are going to be helpful later. Okay, and uh, this doesn't have to be too long. Okay, the other thing is, uh, oh yes, I just want to make sure it's in the center. This doesn't have to be too long. Because it's a, a fire doesn't normally, it's not like a huge column of fire, but just repeat it a bunch of times, that's okay. 
actually just make sure uh, okay that's good i think that's enough times to repeat this 20 minutes in daniel cool yeah no worries it's so pretty fast to do i'm not gonna okay so we got this in the middle more or less uh, same process as always keyframe here uh, another keyframe here and let's make sure it moves just one quadrant only I don't need to see the ghosting through this okay sequence it just uh, boop I mean, uh, eventually you go pretty fast doing these things, right? Okay, we got a pretty fast fire, which is, is not bad. Actually, it's, it's supposed to be fast, so that's good. Um, and I'm going to erase maybe the center part. Yeah, something like that. Okay, that's gonna be good. Let's I am using the grid as a like you know, for me, for like for reference. Okay, this is gonna be the center. So let's bake this out into frame by frame. Hit play and just gonna erase oh I forgot to do something before baking. Uh to delete the little guides. The lines here. Okay. And now we can bake it. Uh, let's just get rid of that top part. Get rid of the bottom. And the bottom maybe it doesn't even matter that much because the fire if it starts on in the ground the ground itself can be like the cutoff point right and like Goro said if we use the, uh, the color of the background it's even better um, you can just add add it to the to your swatches that's how I do it I always yeah it, it just, it just, it just makes the the gradient nicer right yeah. So actually, this is good because it makes it gives the impression that the fire is kind of disappears into the and kind of becomes a smoke at some point, right? Uh, we could do the same. We can dodge it on the on the bottom to get a nice fiery effect. Actually, this is a very long fire. <laughs> <laughs> Let's imagine that the, all this stuff is the, is the smoke already. It's back to the future. It's like the fire trails. Yeah, you can apply this to wherever you want and make it more or less complicated. Uh, but uh, I, th I think it's such a cool trick. Okay. It's, I don't like it that it's flashing so much. So I'm just going to go back to... Go back to the original color and just kind of also the coloring can can be done with without playing back. So if you select all the stuff, the whole thing and then playback, select all the geometry and then stop playback. You can also use the colorize tool and it will and it will be pre precise as well and it won't flash so much so if we use the dodge that way yeah uh, the colorization will um, be treated in, like a single stroke so it's yeah. gonna be like you know, be, even over the course pretty, of time. Con pretty consistent with the, all the frames so let's use the thickness tool to make the bottom part of the file a little thicker right um, grab tool to kind of Play a little bit with it, just to 
make it irregular so it's not so perfect. All right. And we got that wavy action going up that looks so cool. And we can combine this with honey brush to make those little sparks that come out of the, on the fire. This is a really cool trick. Yeah. It's also super efficient, actually. Um, even if um, Daniel did the baking, which is usually like you have to use it with caution because you can just blow up your file size e easily. Yeah. But what Daniel did is he just used like basically a line stroke, right? That you yeah, change. The so, beginning like, was pretty low res. It's actually if you turn on the wireframe, yeah. It's not super, super heavy. Yeah. Yeah, that's like uh, one stroke. It's cool. So, and it's not a very big sequence that's got baked out either. It's like, what, how many frames? Maybe a second uh, or two's worth? It end up because it's because yeah, it's not even 24. Because it's pretty fast, it's 21 frames. But it depends on how slow, how fast you want to do the... In the case of the fire, it doesn't have to be really that fast. I mean, that is slow, so... You don't so for the remedy uh, remedy volcano smoke, you haven't used this technique yet, right? No, I used another one, which I'm going to explain too. Nice. Which is more based on a, like a particle system, uh, which is uh, yeah. And this, I don't know, you can dress up, you can dress up the fire however you want, and just add more stuff to it if you want. Uh, but but the, having that wavy action uh, really sells the idea, oh, this is fire, you know? It gives you a really good starting point, and then you can, again... What happens if you optimize this maximum? <laughs> like, if you go to, like, maximum optimization on this one? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I, I wonder what it looks like. In a break. <laughs> on all the frames, or, or just one? Yeah, on, on this whole layer. Let's... No, just, just use that oh. button. On this whole uh, layer, the, mass, the uh, current layer, yeah, yeah. Oh, it just makes and it more, more. It still looks good. Though. It's not bad. Yeah, it looks cool. It makes it wow. more uh, angular, I guess. What's your poly you, count on the layer? Can well, you show the stats of it? It's all yeah. gonna depend. The... It's all gonna depend on how big you created that first stroke, right? Because, uh, like we mentioned in another live stream. Uh, the if we look at the wireframe, this is gonna be more density than than if you do this, right? Yeah. You have less polygons, less triangles than this. This one is super high density, and then when you do that, you have a high dentis uh, density uh, cylinder. So if, when you do the thickness thing, you get even more detail with this uh, on the thickness, right? Um, yeah. So yeah, you had like 40,000 40, or what does it say? How oh, many polygons? Uh, on on five, five thousand. Twenty. Is that it? Oh, that's cool. That's I think so. Yeah. Right? That's great. Five thousand. Awesome. Mm -hmm. That's super small. Good. And it, 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 it moves up and down. Yeah. So we can just check that here. Yeah, it's, it's not. It's not really heavy. You can use it for quest, uh, depending on if you duplicate this a hundred times, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to keep going up, right? I'm mean, even still, like, a second one only makes it 10. You'd need, uh, I don't even know how many to actually make it probably, like, worrisome. 70? <laughs> I, could, I could do it. So if we, if What's we 70 times 5? Um... The other the other cool thing about this is if we duplicate, we have to remember there because it's exactly the same timing right now. We can always go to the bracket at the beginning, right? You know how to do that, right? And then hold with the grab tool. Uh, I mean, with the grab button, and move that bracket to some somewhere else in the timeline. So what it does is the two cycles are offset now so they don't co completely sync and they look like two different fires instead of exactly the same 
And yes. the reason why it's um, good what Danielle just did to trim the beginning is when you merge the layers down to one, um, if you just offset the whole clip without trimming, then um, Quill will think that it's not being trimmed. So by the time you merge it, um, the timing is matching again. So um, if you want to merge layers, it's important that you trim from the left side and then push the entire clip back, if that makes sense. All right, let's get rid of all this. Let's make some smoke. Smoke. Oh, it's so wasteful. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. So quick, it's so quick to do. <laughs> uh, so you're at thirty minutes, Daniel. Okay, I did this actually to do the smoke. Let's do another technique, um, which is something that I did on the remedy. Um, which is basically like a particle system, more or less. Okay, so let's start with making some some smoke. Uh, oops. Uh, how how did I do that? Is this something like that, right? Uh, I think that's it, kind of something like this, uh, like my my um, initial uh, sprite, right? Something like that. So it kind of looks like a smoke smoke cloud. Um, okay. So what what else? Okay, I think what I did is. Let's create the. Uh, we're gonna create the movement up for this, so it, it just moves up. Okay. Uh, obviously, it's gonna be slower. All right, and also. Damn, no. Excuse me. I forgot to have to put this into a, a group. And the group is the thing that I, I animate. So let's move this up. And yeah. And let's move it in scale as well. A little bit bigger so it kind of gives you that impression that it grows right and I think I did a little bit of rotation too just a little something like that so the beginning starts like this and it kind of rotates something like that okay so and also we're gonna animate uh, the transparency using this guy here um, keyframe and here just gonna do another keyframe and here it's gonna disappear completely uh, we can choose if it's uh, something like that and then eventually disappears and at the beginning of the cycle also we wanted to appear from nothing right from nothing comes up and it, it disappears and also what we're gonna do is a little bit of another layer of movement side to side instead of only going up uh, another layer of transform and in this one I'm just gonna move it slightly side to side so we get a little bit more of that um, the layer is not in the group oh yeah that's the reason why <laughs> okay a little bit of side to side right so it kind of moves a little bit on a wave um, I don't think you set a key yeah <laughs> I'm so distracted today. Okay. 
and it goes back to normal and these keys I'm gonna make them uh, ease in and out so it looks a little bit smoother uh, we want this to go back in there let's see uh, let's see how that plays side to side to side Maybe this one not so much. I'm just gonna turn down. All right. Uh, something like that. It's not perfect, but it's okay. Oh, how many keyframes I have here? Yeah, perfect. Okay. Uh, so we have two animated groups. And we have one layer that contains the actual geometry. And let's just loop this whole thing by putting it in yet another group. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Am I doing this right? Yes. Yes. So this is going to be uh, main smoke or something. I think um, you swap the groups. The main has the keyframes, so oh. you have to move the one below up. Yeah, that one. So that's the father, that. That's this one. Oh. This one has. What have I done? <sighs> yeah. I think that's it. Okay. This one has the up and down. This one has the side to side. Let's name it just in case I forget again. Up and down, and this is the the one that we just used to to create the loop. And hopefully, this should create the infinite loop of this little piece going up forever, right? So. Now we're gonna create a lot of draw calls by doing this, <laughs> but this is the way I did it. So I don't know how we, I managed it to work in the remedy, but it worked. So just du we duplicate this whole thing, and we use the same trick as before, just by um, uh, offsetting the. the loop so it doesn't really begin in, in the same frame so the we have a little offset between these two groups right so let's create more of this <laughs> um, you know enough amount <laughs> until we you know always watching the draw calls I guess at the moment there's nothing <laughs> So we got something going on, right? Something like a smoke column. And I did a bunch of duplicates, but each duplicate is exactly in the same position. So let's play with that too. Let's just make it a little bit different, right? You have recording on still. You oh, have the oh, auto key. Yeah. I think it doesn't matter for this, but. Yeah, Just because in case. I, I didn't have anything selected, right? It, it will still set a key, but um, I think since you're not animating it, it's fine. Yeah, yeah. Rem yeah when when you do this, you wanna make sure that you're not recording. So. So it's cool because even when when it's playing back, you can go ahead and and kind of tweak a little bit the positions of this so they look a little bit different. You can you can even maybe one of them is kind of around it. You know, it's hard to know which one is which, <laughs> but that's okay. So this this one is a little too far. This one is a little too far here, but that's okay. It's all about trying to get this variety, right? 
Um, we can do some more duplicates of this. Again, uh, changing the offset so it's not exactly the same. It's very random how I change the offset. Uh, I'm not following any particular rule. I just randomize this so it's they're not kind of doing the same thing. Um, another way to get variety on this is by going in inside of the groups and say, okay, which one is this one? This one? Okay. This one. And then going inside of the groups and going to the actual geometry and, you know, um, do a little bit of a different thing here so it doesn't always look the same. You know, going in randomly into each group and s and see, okay, here maybe instead of that we're going to do this. So it looks a little bit different. I don't know. So we're starting to get a little bit more variety on the Um, I think that's it. That's how I did this. And then, um, obviously, I think I did a little faster the smoke. Well, this is the this is how I did the smoke group on on the volcano. Well, so basically, a, um, you would say like distance. because it's um because it's like a very slow movement, it's probably recommended to use the transform keyframe approach versus the frame by frame. Because if it was frame by frame, it would be like tons of frames, right? Yeah, it will be tons of frames. I mean, we could try to see what happens. <laughs> uh, I wouldn't uh, think there's that. Also, <laughs> there's also a weird issue when you try to do the um anim brush with it where if you do it too slowly the brush won't actually like make a stroke so it can oh, be oh yeah really especially if jittery. the brush is large right yeah yeah so this one uh i used for you know it, it works well because it kind of looks like this really giant smoke column on a volcano and oh, i think i i did too much on the side to side <laughs> i regret that now but you get the idea of the trick, right? So you, you have one cycle moving up, disappearing and appearing, and then you can duplicate that cycle many times. The good thing about this, it doesn't consume a lot of geometry, but it does consume draw calls. So you have to be aware of that, of the advantages of these and disadvantages of that. Yeah, uh, what I actually, um, to take this, a step further, you don't have to show that, but um, if you actually nest rotations of the assets, smoke asset, like of each smoke particle uh, with transform keyframes, then you get even more organic movements, right? So I did that in my astronaut piece where he, an astronaut is like it was surrounded by fog. I just rotated the crap out of each stroke and then I rotated the group and then I rotated the group again. So. Um, it's like a nested, n like a nesting madness, but um, the poly count stays like really low that way. Uh, you get like tons of like organic movement. Rotating in what direction? Yeah, well, so basically the smoke acid itself, like for example, the paint layer that you have there on the bottom, the very last paint layer, no, in, in the group that you oh, selected. Oh, yeah, yeah that, that could be rotated and looped, you know, and, and, and so on, but. Oh, yeah, yeah. So I can just yeah. go like that and... Exactly. But I would do that also through transform keyframes and then it would just um, become even more organic because then you can't tell where the rotations are coming from anymore. You know, you're at yeah. more randomization. I was kind of wondering about that too. Like, would it be cool to have them like all rotating upwards so it really looks like it's billowing? Yeah. yeah. It go? You could do that in, in, in the, instead of... Uh... And the, I think the main smoke, this one. In this animation, I did a little bit of that, um, where the the very last frame. Oh, where is it? Oh, here. Uh, I rotated that a, a little bit. Oh, did I? I guess. Where is it? Oh. Because it's invisible. Oh, okay. Whatever. Yeah. 
Um, <laughs> you're, you're like already faded out. Yeah, anyway, I didn't do any key frame here. It's okay, only 15 and... more minutes, Daniel. Okay, 15 more minutes. Okay, let's uh, in, let's use that, that time to explain how I did the... Yeah, you, you mean these rotations? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, it depends. Yeah. You can nest more and more and more. I love doing that, you know, so the more rotations and sometimes I rotate out along different pivots and stuff like that. Yeah. And then it becomes like super organic, you know, but this is already looking like that. It's really cool. Yeah. Does I puppeteering mean, uh, advisable? Hmm? I get, you could do puppeteering for the, for the initial movement up and, and this. I think that could be also a good solution to instead of having this layer here, you could do a puppeteer layer, you know, and then use that and then duplicate that many times and then and then do and do the same offset that I did. So you will get that kind of particle effect as well. Is this, I mean, you guys can experiment with this, but you you get the idea. Let's let's do the the caustics. Oh, how do I, I don't know how do you pronounce the it? Caustics. Caustics. The caustics. 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 <laughs> Because I thought that was also a really cool, based on the same things that we talked about today. Um, let's do that quickly, and we can. Yeah, I, I can just answer Kurt's question about um, if it's advisable to puppeteer. It really depends on what you want to do. I think for the smoke itself, it's recommended to do it through keyframes because you want like a nice, steady, even movement. But if you have, for example, like. Um, the smoke in a violent storm or something, then you can just puppeteer the movement much better by hand, for example. So it really depends on what look you're looking for. Um, sometimes I puppeteer things, sometimes I use like, for example, for like those even movements, I tend to use transform keyframes because then you have much more control and it will, it will look uh, much more like um, how a particle would behave uh, when it moves slow. But then um, sometimes you want like different effects where you want it to look more random or faster and stuff like that. In that case, I would use puppeteering. All right. Thank you. All right. So let's break down how, how I created this effect that turned out to be better looking than I, than I thought. <laughs> I, when I started doing this, I thought, oh, this this surely is not going to look good, but let's try. Uh, and I looked into videos on how the caustics move and what's what they do in things like in video games uh, to optimize them the, the, or to figure out a way to make it look realistic or with very little uh, uh, impact on the performance and stuff like that, right? And they basically use like these uh, sprites and these textures and they make a loop and move infinitely in one direction. And I was like, oh, infinite movement. We can do that in Quill. Yeah, I really love how you solved that actually. Like I, I tried it before, like I created just like a grid like you did here. And I, I did not quite analyze how caustics work. And then um, what I did is like, I just wiggled them with a, uh, uh, with a, transform uh with, with the nudge tool but then it just looks like a grid that's wiggling you know it kind yeah, of works in a stylized way yeah but but that's not how caustics work right so um the way you solved it in your whale piece is much more elegant and nicer i do the i did it two ways the first the first way that i did it is um by creating this one thing and make it dance a little bit and I duplicated hmm. that many times, and um, but I'm not gonna show that. I'm gonna show the other version, which is kind of what I end up thinking it looks better. But before duplicating, let's create a little bit of um, just just make it look more like a caustic. So I realized looking at pictures and videos that they have this kind of brighter side on the when they they when the strikes. Uh, how do you call this? The streams of light are kind of crossing with each other. They they tend to be brighter, no? Can you see the touch there? Just to give the feeling that's kind of it. So okay, what I let's do a duplication. This time we're gonna do it side to side. 
Um, maybe they're not going to connect perfectly. I'm going to try to make them connect, but maybe they won't, but that's okay. Uh, they won't connect. That's okay. <laughs> I'm not going to, I'm not going to fuss about that. Uh, what do I want to do? Oh yeah. Let's just make it. Do you need markers? Actually, no markers. Need, yeah, you need markers. Yeah, you're right. Let's do some markers to make sure that we are doing this precisely. Right on the grid, more or less. Um, boop. Uh, okay, it's not gonna connect, but it's okay. You you'll get the idea anyway. Um, we got like a bunch of repetitions. Hello. Hi, baby. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Oh. <laughs> yes. Hello. You're very loud today. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So <laughs> I can't concentrate <laughs> with this baby. Uh, what am I doing? Oh yeah. Move. Sideways. Let's do that. Sideways instead of up. Um, and let's move exactly one grid size. Very good. Yeah. And for sequence. Pop, pop, and pop. And we're moving infinitely with the uh, this thing all right um delete the little markers very important to remember that <laughs> oh. and i think we're we're ready to bake it bake it everything that so now we have these wonderful pieces moving. Uh, the first thing to do is gonna be just get that, get rid of the pop as much as possible. It flickers a little bit, but that's okay because that's what the um, cow sticks do. They flicker. But you can always avoid the flicker by just selecting all the um, all the frames like we did before. Okay. And talking about flickering, we could do that. Um, dodge maybe, and have some kind of nice little flickers. Right, and we can do a little bit of a little bit of that dancing thing that we were talking about here. Hoppa. Ah no, I should have done this when when it's a static. Sorry, uh, that's not the right time to do that now. But it's okay. Um, we can do a little bit more variation, like we did before with the wake. Just selecting everything, playback, stop the playback, and kind of just a little bit of nice variation to it, so it doesn't always look the same. And here's the important bit: we're gonna do this into a surface of the. Inst in my case, I did the whale, right? So. With grab tool, you can always get this whole thing to confirm to a, to a shape. So let's say we have this kind of whale, big whale, animal, or whatever, and the cow sticks are hitting on that. So we 
with with grab tool you can it's just wonderful that you can do this because it, it actually looks like a like a texture nice right it's so cool yeah you know it. what like looking at this um i would be interested what it looks like if you colorize this all evenly with the background color so it's like transparent and then you only use the color dodge to bring it back um oh yeah that could be so a good it, idea. right uh, i think that might look look crazy good because um if we have the same color as the background just change the background color right. to the new color there you go and then let's do some actually without playing let's do this uh, yeah i would try to do the whole thing you know oh, you colorize the, the whole, whole thing, thing and then yeah oh. so it becomes invisible right oh okay all right and then just reveal it oh yeah exactly yeah okay so we have everything kind of invisible yeah make sure the background color matches the current brush so you just tap the background color a little quick no yeah oh. boom yeah so and now you have to like you're saying dodge now bring it back uh, with dodge. In time or or with uh, everything stopped because it, it could, um i think in time yeah try to it, let yeah, it flicker it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's a, and i encourage you guys to to practice and to experiment because it, it does different effects so if we do it in time like goro said you have unselected right yeah currently selected i think still did i it's still selected right it's still blinking on yeah now Oh, oh, that looks pretty good. That looks pretty cool too, though. Yeah, yeah. Oh, I never thought about that. You know, let, let's unselect it, right? Yeah, exactly, and then, and then, then let it just, flicker. And, and little, because little, little dots of. Actually, this is not bad either. To have, to have one a, one area cool. that kind of reveals. That kind. Of, oh, that kind of looks cool too. Though. This kind of area that kind of reveals itself. I'm still on that. The brush big and just hold it <laughs> in for a while. Like, um, yeah, make the brush bigger. And then, yeah, colorize over time, yeah. And make the strength small, uh, less. The the transparency, make it like really weak, even weaker than that. Uh, you wanna... And then, to and then just torch the whole thing. Yeah. There we go. <laughs> it looks so cool. cool. I don't know. Wow, you can, that's you can, pretty. You can always. Experiment with this. It looks like I'm, I'm getting like kind of distant lightning and clouds vibes from that too. Oh like yeah, there's a bunch of stuff that it works yeah. for. Yeah, I don't know. It could be for anything. I mean, once you have the the thing going and the waving and the infinite. Wow, movement, this looks crazy. It opens <laughs> up a lot of opens up a lot of cool effects that you can create just by doing that. And the organicness of it is so cool. Once you start doing grab tool over time, or or with a with a stop frame, the stop frame, what is gonna what it's gonna create is if you if if I paint here for example, every time the geometry goes through this area is gonna hit is gonna be hit by this light, which can be a good thing because it, it can make you can make it look like the light is hitting this area, right? So, no one I can do today. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> Actually, uh, oh no, hang on. I, I did it wrong. Sorry. I, you have to select everything first before, uh, yeah. Select everything first. All the, make sure that we go through the whole loop. Uh, press pause. And now you can say, okay, I'm I want this area to be brighter. And all the waves, every time they go through this area, they're going to be brighter. Uh, look at that. Isn't that wonderful? So you guys play with caustics uh, today. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's great. I encourage you to try and practice and kind of experiment because I think it's it's such a discovery for me this this technique. Um, we're at time, Daniel. Perfect. We're, yet eleven. We're, we're we're done, right? Yep. Cool. Awesome. <laughs> we're done, right? I just, <laughs> just want to let's see. Let's. I want I did something yesterday. I want to show you quickly. Uh, you, you guys know that adding salt, uh, chef meme thing? Oh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. The, the, the guy with the sunglasses? I just kind of pictured Daniel adding that when he was dodging the caustic. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Look at this smoke column. 
Oh, oh whoa. And I used, That's I how used... you do smoke like a boss. <laughs> and, I, and I did exactly the same techniques, right? So you mixed both techniques, right? You have the fire the way you showed it, and the smoke you did it the yeah. second way, or? Yeah, similar way, with the same cylinder as the starting point. Oh, you combined it, yeah. And I, and I did the... Um, I did a little ball. Wow, that looks crazy. So this really actually, cool. yeah, to me this one looks better than the system that I did for the remedy for the volcano. If I knew this back then, I would have done it this way because this. Oh, is... so so this one doesn't have transform keyframes, right? No, this one is with uh, with everything baked. Okay. This is all baked, the smoke, and I yeah. feel like it looks better because of these little deformations that happen here. That looks a lot like smoke. I think I really like that. Yeah, because, the uh, the very tippy top is just awesome. This distortion that happened, that wouldn't. I didn't know how to do that back then, and if I knew, I would have done this and for the remedy for the for the volcano on the back, on the distance, and the fire. I added this effect as well. I wanna. I don't know if you guys use it or not, but I, I think it's a cool effect that you can just get with with a simple. Uh, oh yeah, so your glow effect. Yeah, <laughs> the glow effect. Since we're talking about the effects today, this is just a this is just a one cylinder brush uh, eraser tool, right? You get this, and then thickness tool to make that transition be smoother and bigger, right? The more you use the thickness tool, the more transition you will have from the center to the outside. So I recommend using that as well for kind of glows. But in for the quest, it's not recommended to do a big area of this. So you you don't want to. Um... But do you feel like in general, if you share it to um, mobile and if you look at it your, with your quest, do you feel like in general, if it's small glows, that it still works? If it's if it's small and it doesn't yeah. cover the whole your whole vision, it's really fine. It's okay. The okay. remedy the remedy has a lot of those. That's used, true. Yeah. I used it constantly, yeah. and it, and if and you don't you don't see flickering or or glitches, you will see yeah. glitches if it's something like this. If it's on the glitch, sides, right? Yeah, on the you, peripheral gonna, of your head. Gonna, on your peripheral view, you're gonna see glitches and weird things in quest only. So, yeah, just a word of uh, advice. If you do this technique with the, the the glow, just make sure it doesn't cover the whole vision of your. And if it's in the center of your vision, that's better. If uh, you know, if it goes into the side of your vision, you will glitch a little bit, but you won't notice because you're not looking at that. Yeah. So, but yeah, it's a cool trick to, to to do this gradient kind of thing. All right, and I think I'm done. Good. Looks amazing, Daniel. Thank uh, you for your stream today. Yeah, that was awesome. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you. See, guys, this is why you should have voted for this one first. <laughs> this one's cool. <laughs> Save the best for today. Yeah, I want to see. I want to see awesome effects on the next uh, quill scenes on theater. Well, the thing is, like the this week's quill weekly challenge is elements, right? So this is uh, this is perfect timing for your exactly. tutorial. <laughs> exactly. If you're a little late, it's okay, right? Fire, water, smoke, and uh, wind, right? Wind. And earth. For yeah. earth, it doesn't really help, but... <laughs> no, not really. Someone for, can do uh, Avatar. For, for wind, either. <laughs> <laughs> well, wind has particles. You can do wind with smoke and stuff, you know? Okay, let's... Yeah, you can uh, have, like, this is the maybe leaves blowing in the class. So I'm going to stop the recording right here. Thank you for watching.